Hello everyone, this is your favorite snow boy, and today I'm doing another election video on the 2024 election on what is the best case for the Republicans, the Democrats, and any third parties. Let's begin. So up, so the first part is the Republicans best showing if they can't do it in 2024. So if they, so here's the case, like if they have candidates that can appeal to both sides of the aisle, including independents and moderates, and maybe to some demographics, like, let's say, Ron DeSantis and Glenn Youngkin, they could win the state, these the states of Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, both Dakotas, most of Nebraska, District 2 I'll do with in a bit, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, and South Carolina with complete ease. Now here's my point. Iowa, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, they, and Ohio will go likely. Now for the lanes, here's the point. Nevada might go for, for lean. While Arizona might go likely. Wisconsin, they might go likely as well. While Michigan, yes, Michigan will be a lean. And Minnesota, maybe a tilt. Pennsylvania, a lean. New Hampshire, lean. District 2, Maine, like, it's gonna be safe. Now, here is my point. Sorry for that ad right there. District 2 of Nebraska might barely go to the uh, Republicans. New Mexico might go lean, while Colorado might go for tilt. Alaska will be easily safe, like, there, there's no doubt. Georgia will go lean. Lean? Yeah, lean. I was, I'm considering tilt, but I'm like, nah, it's not a good idea. And they might dampen the appeal of some dem of Democratic states as well. They might push Washington into likely. Oregon to lean. California will still be safe no matter what. So, Oregon will still be safe no matter what. Wa Virginia might go for tilt D. D.C., Maryland, it will work for go D. New Jersey might go likely. Same for Connecticut and Rhode Island. Vermont and Massachusetts and New York will not go be will be nearly unflippable for the Democrats and Hawaii will will be unflippable. So this is the best case scenario for the um, Republicans. Like if they have the right candidates, the right appeal, if the economy is crappy and President Biden's deep and unpopular, they might get a best case scenario of three hundred and forty two electoral votes to 196 electoral votes going for the Democrats. And that's and here's and if that is the case, that would be the biggest one since the victory of George Herbert Walker Bush against Michael Dukakis in 1988. Now here is the second part. In the best case for the Democrats, if they if they elect someone who is not like Biden, like not some eighty year old guy who's at the very least probably I'm not gonna say it, <laughs> I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna be like one of those guys, like this nominate a moderate to a little conservative Democrat, and the VP would be a moderate to liberal wing of the Democrats. I say that the best chance will be winning the states of California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Illinois, Hawaii, D.C., Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, it just barely with these two right here. Now here is what it gets a little tricky. Here you go. Nevada might go lean. Same for Arizona. New Mexico might go for lean to likely because of the Democrats' mass appeal to Hispanic voters. But I'm leaning on likely. Minnesota will might go likely. Lean will go for Michigan and Wisconsin. 
lean for the Democrats in Pennsylvania, a likely one for Virginia, likely here for Georgia, not likely, lean, sorry, and a lean victory in the second district of Maine. And that's pretty much it. And they might push states. They might they might push very few states into the more less likely areas, like Iowa. It, it might go to likely. Same for Missouri, Indiana, likely. Ohio will stay likely. The rest, most of the South will be win winnable easily. North Carolina might be pushed to uh, lean. Florida, lean. Texas, lean. And with and thanks to the upset victory recently of Mary Pelota in the House special and her like possible win in the 2022 midterms, this could get pushed to likely D. And they're going to win District 2 no matter what. So I think this is the best case scenario for the Democrats. And to be honest, this ain't... It's basically, it's virtually like 2020 all over again, where the Democrats have 303 electoral votes to the Republicans, 235 electoral votes. Next up is third parties. Now let's see, uh, first we're going to do the left-leaning third parties, like the most recent one, the forward party. The color will be purple since that's what they, they basically represent. That's the forward party. They might be able to chip away at the Democrats' appeal, and maybe even, and maybe in the best case scenario, win the state of Maine, like win all of Maine, right here, and dampen Democrats' appeal pretty much all over the place, like up here, where they might push both of them to likely, Colorado to lean, New Mexico to tilt. Louis, Illinois will be most likely like safe. Lean for Minnesota. The, the, will be, the rest of here will be safe. But they might push the same three states I mentioned earlier. Maybe they might even push New Jersey to lean. Who would think of that nowadays? New York will stay safe no matter what. Virginia, they might get pushed to the lean section. In Michigan, they might just barely edge out a tilt victory. The Republicans, they will definitely benefit from this. They will definitely benefit. The Republicans will definitely benefit from this. Alaska, they might get a easy victory in Arizona, likely lean for Nevada. The rest of the states will be easy picking for both of them. They might win all three states, like the rest, all the. Nebraska's districts, no biggie. The rest of the states will be no biggie. Oops, let me fix that. Boo, thank you, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Michigan's gonna be basically a virtual a tie to very tilt for Democrats. Ohio, Indiana, it's gonna be easy wins for the GOP. Wisconsin, lean. Pennsylvania, lean. Michigan, likely, I think. Yeah, maybe likely. Mm. North Carolina, both Carolinas, safe. Georgia, lean. Florida, likely. And Texas will be a likely. So if this is the best case if a left-leaning third party would be in, the Republicans will be able to cash out on this with 301 electoral votes to the Democrats' 233 electoral votes and the four forward parties' four electoral votes, which will be the first time since... The election of 1968, since the George Wallace American Independent Campaign, that third party will get electoral votes, so the state of Maine. The last part I'm going to clear up is the right-leaning third parties. So, sorry, forward party. Yeah, you're used. Get out of here. But let's, let's make a, a kind of ridiculous example. A revival of a possible patriot party. Yes, call me crazy. I don't care. I do how we do. No, it's not going to be color black. Add a color. All right, let me. F Hold on, guys. Let me fix this. No, oh, I'm not going to edit Democrat. You little no. 
Hold on. Let me just add a candidate. That's Patriot Party. We're gonna do yellow. Okay, back to the track. I know it looks like brown, but um, I sure you do. So let's say it's around late 2023, 20, 20, early 24, where the Republican Party basically shunned out all the Trump delegates and went for someone else like Ron DeSantis or Mitt Romney. Of course, Trump, who would be like 78 to 80 by the time, would be incredibly angry and take all of his supporters to form up the a possible Patriot Party. If that would be the case, it would completely screw, screw over the Republicans. Since they had, they would have a chance in extremely, in extreme conservative states like Kansas, Oklahoma, Wyoming. Like, Republicans, they might edge out a victory in Utah, South Carolina, and a tilt one in Indiana. The Patriot parties may struggle with victories because of, since the party is new and all. I think it would just be lean to lean categories in general. Like, I think it would be a mixed result like this. Yeah, it would just be extremely confusing to see what happened. Like, basically, I think it would be tilt to, like, the safe victories all over the place for the possible Patriot Party. Like, if that was the case, it would be a absolute blowout for the Republicans, as the Democrats will be able to cash in hard on this. And when states left to right, California, the West Coast, safe, Nevada, likely, Arizona, lean, New Mexico and Colorado, safe, Texas, lean, Hawaii, safe, Alaska, they might just edge out a lean victory, Florida, lean, Georgia, likely, I th yeah, I think likely would do, North Carolina, lean, Virginia, most of the Northeast, safe, 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 New York, safe, Pennsylvania, like, likely, sort of, I'll just put it at likely, lean at best, New Hampshire, lean, most of the main districts, lean, I mean, safe, for the Patriots, they might win District 2, like, uh, like, with near ease, Ohio, tilt, Illinois, safe, Michigan, likely, Minnesota, safe, Wisconsin, lean, Iowa, lean, and with one more, the Democrats will be an easy, vic likely victory. And if this was a, if this what, if that was the case, boy, this is a confusing map. <laughs> the Democrats would blow out both parties with 415 electoral votes to to the Patriot Party's 96 electoral votes and the Republicans' 27 electoral votes. Now here is the case I'm like, this would not only be the first time since 1968 that the a third party would get electoral votes, but this would be the best performance of a third party since, get this, Theodore Roosevelt's Progressive Party in the election of 1912. I mean, now this, it would just destroy the political world. They're going to be like, how the hell did this happen? So, yep, yeah, so that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. And take it easy, guys. Peace.